It's time. DigiKey and Adafruit present. Hi, on MPI. Okay, this week's Ion MPI new product, Lady Ada, is from Texas Instruments. That's right. What is it? I love Texas. They got great chips and they got great barbecue. This week's Ion MPI is the TI BQ25792. Have it written down so don't forget it. The BQ25792, which actually wasn't on the DigiKey new product section, but it's such an awesome chip. Um, I saw it, I think, through like the TI RSS feed, and I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta cover this because this is such a great. Um, charger chip. So this is the eval board. So you, know, you can pick up the eval board from DigiKey 2. They also have chips in stock. I'm also trying to pick on MPI chips that you can actually buy at the time of, uh, of viewing because I know there's a, a global chip shortage. Um, but they do have them in stock. So that's why it's this week's on MPI. So the BQ25792, here you go. So this is a chip. This is a simplified schematic because there's a bunch of control pins that aren't shown here. But basically, it's a buck boost battery charger you can uh charge one to four series batteries 4s so that's four batteries in a row just like i think 18 volts or something um you can uh it's a buck boost converter charger which means that you can charge it from almost any voltage and then it even has like an on the go mode where it can like buck boost out as well so it's kind of like an all-in-one like power charger manager updater and it's got a uh, great standalone and I squared C support. It kind of like does everything. Like I've looked at a lot of chargers and there's always like, here's a simple one that just does one S batteries and only charges at a certain rate. But this one, this one was really like, it's a quite a delicious chip. Um, so it's, it's can support USB PD. Note that it doesn't do the USB PD negotiation. Um, you would have that done by a separate chip, but um, if, if necessary. Um, but it does support, um, you know, very high voltage input from 3.6 to 24 volts in. Uh, you can choose uh, 750 kilohertz or 1.5 megahertz switching frequencies for the buck and boost. You can configure the charging current uh, over I squared C or with a resistor, so you can kind of like a rough charge current with a resistor, um, and then, or I mean, you can as rough as your 1% res uh, resistor is, or you can ch uh, program it in over I squared C. Um, there's max power point tracking. Uh, support uh, because it's a buck boost so you know it's, it's it has like input voltage and input current limiting but you still there might be something that like sometimes the voltage going higher or the current going higher like may change the efficiency overall so it tries to find the, the highest efficiency and it does have d plus and d minus lines to detect um, USB chargers like have like the Apple resistor charger divider thing where the voltage on the d plus and d minus pins um, when not connected to a host or a peripheral chip can to tell you basically what the the charger is capable of um i recently started using bq charger chips so this is uh our solar lipo charger usb dc or solar uh using a bq chip not this one but uh this one's a i think a linear charger and it works great i mean i really love these bq chips um ti has been making uh, lipo and uh, other battery charger chips for a very very long time i've noticed recently they really stepped up their power supply and battery game. Really, like every time I look at a chip, I'm like, they really thought of everything. Okay, so the first thing is it has like the standalone mode where there's there's an I limit pin and a prog pin. And here's, you can see here by picking the, a certain kind of resistor, you can like hand, like you hard code in the number of cells. Uh, so it's 4.2 volts per cell. So it's like one cell is 4.2, two cells is, you know, uh, 4.8, and then, you know, uh, up to 16.6. Uh, um, so, you know, I tend to use, you know, 3.7 volt, 4.2 volt, you know, single cell configurations the most, but I've noticed a lot of people who do robotics or drones, um, they tend to use uh, 2S or 3S cells. So this would be perfect for them. And uh, one of the nice things is, is that, you know, this, it supports USB or DC inputs. Um, and the thing that's really frustrating about DC linear chargers or even, you know, uh, buck or boost chargers, it's like you don't know when you plug in a DC 2.1 millimeter outlet, you know, something into your outlet, the wall ward. You don't know what you're going to get. Like there's there's wall DC adapters that give you three volts up to 24 volts. Like you have no idea. And so that's what I really like that this is, it's so zen. No matter what you give it, it gives you the right voltage out once you set um, the output you want. So it has, like I said, a buck boost converter. So this is, for example, the, the graph of using... A 1S battery, so about a 4-volt battery, and it shows you here the V buses 
from 5 volts at the top all the way down to 20 volts. So yes, the efficiency goes down, but that's okay. I mean, which, which you know, makes sense. It's less efficient. You're, you're going to lose some efficiency with the buck boost, but you're, you can still charge from a 20 volt power supply. Like, it's totally fine. Um, uh, likewise, here's a 3S battery charger, and you can see uh, this is, it's uh, the yellow line at the bottom is 5 volt is where it's trying to boost up to about 12 volts, so it's not as efficient, and then 9 to 12, that's closer to the, the actual battery output voltage, um, you're going to get more efficient, and then, you know, 3S is kind of nice because like 15 or 20 volts is, is a little bit above, but you're not uh, overdri overdriving the buck boost converter. But basically, what I like about this, it shows your input, your output, it doesn't matter. It's all possible, and it'll just do the, the right thing. Um, it has dynamic power management, which is what I use in the solar charger that I showed you earlier. Um, so it, you know, if you have a wall adapter and it can supply one amp max, but you're trying to charge a battery and it likes to be charged at two amps max, like you don't want to draw two amps from the wall adapter um, because it'll collapse the voltage. Like the, the, the wall adapter will overcurrent and shut down. So you have to be very careful. As you see that voltage drooping, you, you want to stop before you overload the adapter, overload the USB port. The, the cable can, you know, have a voltage drop as well. So it uses this dynamic power management, which checks the, the input voltage and, and slowly uh, turns down the current as the, um, as the voltage starts drooping. Um, there's also this input current optimizer, which you, I think you could turn on over I squared C. And this actually does like more of a max power point tracking thing because again, sometimes the voltage going up or down, it just because it's going down doesn't mean it's going to be less efficient and going up as means more. Like it can be either way depending on, like you saw those curves, like it's, it kind of depends on your input voltage point and your output battery voltage. So this is kind of neat. Um, I want to try this because I wonder how it would work with solar because again, solar is so specific in particular about getting that max power point. But this does seem to kind of like noodle around the the voltage and current to try to find that max power point. So this could, this will get you better, faster charging because you're gonna get the max amount of power out of your power supply. Um, it also does, uh, like I said, it, it can do USB D plus D minus detection. Um, you know, depending on the voltage dividers on those two pins, it can give you a hint about what the uh, power supply can give you. And so this, if you connect the D plus and D minus pins, it'll, it'll, it'll do an analog digital conversion on those and kind of try to figure out like, okay, what's, what does the power supply think it can provide? Um, even if I could take more power out, I'm going to limit it to what it's telling me is the max. It's, it's a polite way of working with USB wall adapters. Um, and then of course there's this I squared C interface. And so you can use that to read the analog digital converter inside. So like, Everything from like the temperature to the battery input voltage to the power input voltage to the current uh, for charging and the current for the buck boost converters all measured. And so you can read that whenever you want to see what the status is and like do an analysis of how your, your battery life is, is going on. So that's the I squared C port, which again is optional. You don't need to use it. It runs perfectly fine in standalone mode. Um, and finally, the, I thought this was kind of nifty, although I, I'll be honest, I've never used this myself, is that you can put it into on-the-go mode, where instead of using the buck boost to charge the battery, the battery then like goes backwards and is buck boosted to an output voltage that you set over I squared C. So if you want it to be like a 5-volt output or 12-volt output uh, boost converter or buck converter, and especially if you're like kind of in the middle of like between what um, the battery nominal voltage and peak put voltage is, this could be kind of neat. You don't have to use it. Of course, you can just take the system voltage out and it'll give you the, the battery voltage. Um, of course, it's, it does power sharing. So if it's powered over DC, you'll get, it, it won't drain the battery. You'll, you'll just get power from DC. And then when the DC is connected, it, it charges from the, the battery instead. And this is just some efficiency showing that you can you know, get about like a half an amp to an amp uh, from the on-the-go uh, converter. So yeah, kind of like an all-in-one like Whatever you have, if it's got a bunch of LiPo batteries, this charger will probably do the right job for you. All right. Everybody likes this and everybody wants this. It's a great chip and so, it's in stock. It's yeah. not too expensive. It's a couple bucks. Here's the part number. If they want to search, they can you know, yeah. read this here. But you could also probably just search for it. The BQ25792. So it's in stock. Yeah. Uh, which is, again, I'm trying to only suggest things in stock. They have a, they have a couple thousand stock. I'm definitely going to pick some up. It's a great chip. It's available in QFN. It's not too hard to put together. It's non-BGA. And uh, not too many pads and not too many connections. Like it's very, 
It's bare bones, it's spare, but it's very complete. Hi on MPI.